The city of New London was in ruins and littered with debris. At the Ocean Beach Resort, 50 cottages were lifted from their foundations. To the east in Rhode Island, the devastation would be complete. Musquamacan, Charlestown, Watch Hill, and other beach resorts vanished along with dozens of Connecticut residents who were there when the hurricane came. The eye of the hurricane passed over New Haven at 3.50 p.m. It provided a momentary relief. Hundreds of the city's stately elm trees were down. Electricity was out. In West Haven, the main road of the Savin Rock Amusement Park was washed away. The roller coaster had collapsed. The hurricane weakened little as it moved inland. Tens of thousands of trees, still thick with foliage, toppled within seconds of the onslaught, taking electrical and telephone wires with them. Children caught in the storm on their way home from school raced for their lives between falling trees. The storm really began to show its strength around two o'clock or so in the afternoon. And at three o'clock when we dismissed, it, the wind was blowing terribly, and it was very, very rainy. And Barbara Mitchell, who lived near the school, was afraid to leave the building. It was raining so hard, and the wind was blowing so hard. And I said to Barbara, go, go, Barbara. I just thought it was going to get worse rather than better. And I said, I'll stand in the doorway, and I'll watch you. And she finally got enough courage to, to leave the building. On High Street in Middletown, a thoroughfare once dubbed by Charles Dickens as the most beautiful street in America, trees were down everywhere. At nearby Wesleyan University, the school church steeple had been knocked away. In rural communities, the storm destroyed barns and dairy cattle seemingly at random. I, uh noticed uh, all of a sudden that the barn door blew off and came floating through the air headed to the house. I thought it was going to strike our house. Then all of a sudden the rooftops started coming off of our chicken coops and floating through the air and I felt like I was in the Wizard of Oz movie. I couldn't believe that things like this were happening but wind had blown the chickens through the air, feathers flying, ch chickens screaming and ganging up, and uh, they piled into piles and suffocated. At that time, they were all ready to build a consolidated school in Ellington. We just had one-room schools, and then um, they had had meetings, planning, and then when this happened, why, the farmers were just devastated, and they just dropped the whole idea of building a school. They said the farmers had such a loss from all the tobacco sheds going because that was one of the prime products in Ellington at the time. The greatest danger from the storm as it moved inland came from the rivers and streams already swollen by four days of rain. Bridges and roads were washed out. In northeastern Connecticut, the Quinnebog jumped its banks and inundated Putnam. The Salmon River in Colchester ran wild. The hurricane moved into Hartford at about 4 p.m. The wind had slowed, but the pounding rain continued. The Connecticut River flood level reached almost 25 feet before midnight. 
Areas of Hartford were evacuated by the Red Cross and hundreds of men were called into the city to build emergency dikes and sandbags. The flood crest wouldn't come until the next day. I was working in Foxes in Hartford. Um, a friend of mine invited me to go to her house. We, you think we could get through the sh streets? We just couldn't. Every street was dead. Four hours after it began, the hurricane was over. But it had done its work. The shoreline of Connecticut was altered as new beaches were formed and old ones eroded away. 20% of all the trees in Connecticut were laid to waste by the hurricane. The State Forest Service estimated that it would take a string of rail cars 195 miles long to haul away the timber. Its effect on a forest was extremely dramatic. Uh, not only the uh, forests were blown down, but salt spray uh, continued inland several miles. Um, and it literally changed all mature forests were essentially destroyed. Not that we had a lot of mature forests, but any forests of any size were blown down and the forest had to start over again. Nearly all of the fallen timber had to be cut and removed by hand. Gangs of workers from the Civilian Conservation Corps and the WPA worked to clear streets of trees. In those days we didn't have chainsaws, so everything was hand work all with hand crosscut saws, five and six foot crosscut saws and, and axes. It was hard work, but us, we were young and uh, used to it. And there were, the camps, uh, CCC camps had 200 uh, young men and some camps had 250. And uh, so after the hurricane, they put most everyone to work on salvaging timber and getting things opened up. Damage to state parks was enormous. The famed pavilion at Hamanasset Beach was lost. The Quinnebog State Park was damaged so completely that it would not reopen. On the evening of September 21st and into the morning hours of the next day, people began to recover from the shock of the hurricane. Thursday, September 22nd, 1938. Every tree is gone. Our sun porch is gone. The tin roof, etc., etc. Al and I walked to the village to see if our friends were alive, and it was worse there than we ever dreamed. We saw dazed little boys from the train wreck. Five were drowned in Stonington hundreds homeless and many missing. Everyone trying to find friends and relations. We found our boat at the railroad crossing. The shore resorts are wiped out. We are dazed and confused beyond belief. Helen Odell Gildersleeve, Stonington, Connecticut. The bodies of the dead began to wash up on shore. Victims were found underneath debris, in their homes or in cars. A new London police officer on duty during the storm lost his mother-in-law and two children, ages four years and six months. The storm killed people in a variety of ways. Some died of heart attacks and cerebral hemorrhages when the storm first struck. Most drowned or were killed by falling debris. Newspapers published lists of the dead and missing for days. <laughs> 